Hi there, welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here, and in this video we're going to talk about the highest common factors and lowest common multiples of numbers. It's the second video on this topic. Um, in particular, we're going to focus on finding the HCF and LCM of bigger numbers, and for that we're going to need a new method using prime factor decomposition. You'll remember from the first video on this topic, when we were trying to find the HCF and LCM of two numbers, um, what we did is basically list out the factors and find the biggest number, which is in both lists. In, in this case, the biggest number in both lists um, of the number 8 and 6 is 2. So 2 is the highest common factor. And we listed the multiples as well. And we found that the biggest, uh, the smallest number in both of those lists was 24. So the LCM is 24. However, 8 and 6 are small numbers. The multiples in particular are quite small and there's not that many factors for them. Let's take a look at this example. If we were asked to work out the highest common factor in example one of 48 and 60, um, I wonder if we should have a go at this. Um, let's just have a quick go. Is one multiplied by 48? Is two multiplied by 24? It's three multiplied by 16? It's four multiplied by 12? 5, it's not 5, it's 6 multiplied by 8. Alright, there's a lot of factors there. But the multiples are already getting difficult. 48, 96, you add another 8 onto that and you get 140, um, 144. And they're getting big numbers. Okay, Th These multiples will be 60, 120, 180. When they will both meet, we don't know how long that will be. So this method is, is a bit... Um, you know, long-winded for, for big numbers and we're going to struggle with big numbers for this method. Okay, so what we're going to do is come up with a new method. Now, you'll remember in a video we did on prime numbers that any composite number in the world, so any composite number can be broken up into its prime factors because prime factors are the building blocks of all numbers. So we're going to use this idea in order to find the factors uh, and the multiples of, of larger numbers, okay? And in particular, the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple. So what we're going to do is the first thing, um, we're going to write 48 and 60. So 48 uh, here and 60 here. And we're going to decompose them or break them into their prime numbers. So let's do 48. We can write that as 2, the first prime, multiplied by 24. But 24 is composite, so let's break that further. Let's try it with 2. Yes, we can write that as 2 multiplied by 12. Remember to circle the primes as you go along. 12 is composite, and we can write this as 2 multiplied by 6. 6 is also composite, and we can write that as 2 multiplied by 3. And 3 is in our prime list up here. So that is um, 48 broken down into its primes. And it's 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 3. So we're done for that. Let's do the same with 60. 60 we can write as 2 multiplied by 30. 30 is composite, we, so we can break it down into 2 multiplied by 15. Now, we can't write 15 as 2 multiplied by another whole number, so we try the next prime, which is 3, and we can write that as 3 multiplied by 5, and 5 is prime. So 60 is 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5. Right, so we have written 48 and 60 using their prime uh, factors, okay? And this is going to be really helpful to us. So I'm going to represent 48 in a circle. So I'm going to draw a circle here, and I'm going to use this to represent the, the 48 as follows. So here's 48. And it can be represented um, as a 2 multiplied by another 2, multiplied by another 2, multiplied by another 2, and multiplied by a 3. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for 60. So 60 is over here, and 60 can re be represented as a 2 multiplied by another 2, multiplied by another 3, multiplied by another 5. So these circles are just going to be helpful to me in one second to understand what they have in common. Now, 
48 is all those numbers multiplied in that circle. 60 is all those numbers multiplied together in that circle. What if we merge the circles? So I'm going to drag this over here as follows. And I'm going to drag this over here as follows. Okay. Instead of uh, writing them as two separate circles, what do they actually have in common? What factors do they have in common? Well, they both have a 2. So let's show that as 2 in the, in the middle there, instead of a 2 in each separate circle, because they both have a 2 in them. And they also both have another 2 in them. So let's write that in, in the middle as they have it in common. So let's rub that two out there. There's no need to have two in that circle and two in that circle. It's in both circles. And they also have another three in them both. There's a three and there's a three. So we can write that they have a three in common. So we can rub that three out and rub that three out. And now 48 uh, is represented by all those numbers multiplied together. So 48 is represented by all these numbers multiplied together as it was before, but this time 60 is represented as well by all these numbers multiplied together, but this is a really helpful to us because in the middle, this, these numbers here are the ones that are common to both. So, because 48 was made up of those primes and 60 was made up of those primes, the highest common factor of both numbers, what makes them both up, must be this 2 multiplied by this 2 multiplied by this 3. So it's 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3, and if you work that out, that's actually 12. So the highest common factor are, uh, is given by the, the primes that they have in common. Now the lowest common multiple, if you remember the multiples of 48 are like 48, 96, 144, etc. And the multiples of 60 are 60, 120, uh, 180, etc. Okay, the first one is always what's in the number. Okay, the numbers that like 48, the first multiple is 48, the first multiple is 60, 60. Now, in order to find uh, the lowest common multiple of both of these numbers, it has to have all the factors of 48 and all the factors of 60 in it, because otherwise it wouldn't be able to be a multiple of both. So in order to find the lowest common multiple, it actually turns out to be that multiplied by that, multiplied by each of these three, and multiplied by that. So in this case, the lowest common multiple is 2 multiplied by 2, multiplied by everything we had in here, which we already said was 12, and multiplied by the 5. And if we work that out, we have 2 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 12, multiplied by 5, we get 240. And indeed, 48 and 60 uh, uh, have, a, have the lowest common multiple of 40. So that's trying to explain where, why this method works. I'm going to do one more example where I do it more formulaically um, just to show you how to do it quickly in the exam. So example two, we want to find the HCF and LCF um, of 140 and 210. So write down 140. Let's break it down or decompose it into its prime factors. It's 2 multiplied by 70. 70 is composite, so we can write that as 2 multiplied by 35. Uh, we cut 2 or 3, the first two primes don't go into 35, so we can write that as 5 multiplied by 7, and 7 is actually prime, so we circle it. So 140 is 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 7. Let's do the same for 210. 210 can be written as 2 multiplied by 105. Now 105, we, we can't, 2 doesn't uh, divide into 105, but 3 does, and 3 goes in, uh, 35 times. 35 is composite and we can write that um, 2 or 3 can't divide into it but we can write that as 5 multiplied by 7 and both of these are primes. So 210 is 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 7. Right, rather than drawing separate circles like I did before to show you um, why, where the idea comes from, we can just straight away overlap the circles as follows. Okay, just in an exam, we can do it much quicker. And what we can do is it's important that you list at the top. They both have a 2, so that goes in the middle. Um, they both have a 5, so that goes in the middle. And they both have a 7, so that goes in the middle. By the way, this represents 140, and this one represents 210. Okay, 
maybe I should color these all a slightly different color just to make it clear that these are the common ones. Okay, and now what's left for um, the 140? Well, we had a 2 uh, that we didn't use, so we must put the 2 in here. And over in the other one, we had a 3 that we didn't use, so that must go in this one here as follows. So therefore, the highest common factor is going to be 2 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 7, which is equal to 70. And the lowest common multiple, that was all these multiplied together, is going to be everything multiplied. So 2 multiplied by what we had here, which was 70, multiplied by the 3. And the lowest common multiple is going to be equal to 420. And we're done. Right, time for you to have a go at a few yourself. Here's three questions. Find the HDF and LCM of those pairs of numbers. I'll show the answers in 10 seconds. Right, and here are the answers. So um, the HCF was 4 and the lowest common multiple was 120 for the first one. Then it was 24160 and it was 21760. Just to finish off, quick look at an exam question. You may want to have a go at this one. First part expressed 120 as a product of primes using the prime factor decomposition and then find the highest common factor only the HCF of 90 and 120. Maybe pause the video, in five seconds I'll show you the answer. Okay, here's the answer, and um, there we go. So this is uh, just demonstrating to you that now you're able to answer a GCSE question on this topic using what we've just learned. Thanks loads for watching, hope you found it useful, catch you again sometime.